If you could describe D and D in five words or less, what would they be? Um, battles, magic, spells, um, get bitches. <laughs> <laughs> We come to this one abandoned house that we've been warned not to go into. We were never warned. We were, you were warned. When D&D kind of took off as kind of a pop culture fad in probably, yeah, late 70s, early 80s, there was a lot of worry because it was dealing with demons. Like if you open the monster manual, it's got statistics for all the different devils. You've got bells above and you've got it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all labeled as evil and you know, you're probably supposed to kill them or whatever. And just the, the idea maybe of a game that has no set goal and that is this kind of improvisational imagination game worried them. The fact that kids would play this for six, you know, go down to the basement with a bunch of cheetos and stuff and play for six hours at a time seemed a little cultish. The fact that there's one figure who's the dungeon master, whatever. Simply put, a game of D&D works like this. One person, the dungeon master, or DM, runs the story while the rest of the group takes on the persona of a character they've created or found online. Your character sheet details everything you need to know about who you are, including your race, such as dwarf or high elf, and class, such as barbarian or wizard. As for the story itself, you can buy pre-written adventures or write them yourself, but what actually happens during the game is completely improvised. The essence of a game like D&D is that you decide to do a thing, and then you roll a bunch of dice to see whether you succeed or fail. There is a, an alchemy between having a game that essentially on some level has no rules. It's creative, it's improvisational. The game is started with the dungeon master, in this case me, first laying out a scenario. You look around, but you don't see Captain Savoy anywhere. Okay. The cave is silent, and the air around you feels stale. What yeah. do you do? Cry. <laughs> then, the players react, acting as their characters by telling the DM what they want to do. I think that we should look around and see if there's any signs of the soldiers that were sent here before. Whether they succeed or fail at whatever action they've chosen to take is up to the dice. You roll a 20-sided die, called a d20, and add a modifier from your character sheet, which includes six base attributes. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Here, since the player is doing something that requires perception, I've had her add her wisdom modifier, so she gets a bonus added to the die roll. Perception, okay, so 13 plus my perception bonus, if I can read, is a plus three. So I have 13 plus three is 16. Then I tell her what happens as a result. So you can see footsteps, okay. tracks that have gone into the cave and then out again in a hurry. And in a nearby bush, you find a broken and bloodied silver dagger. Ooh. That kind of world building tendency that Tolkien had uh, ties in very well to sort of the affordances of a game like Dungeons and Dragons. Certainly there are plenty of dungeon masters out there who are mini Tolkien's who, you know, spend hours and hours and hours crafting their own unique fantasy world, most of which was, you know, the iceberg under the sea that the players may or may not come across, but that at any given instant, if the player decide to do something wacky and go off the rails, they would have that town already conceived of in their mind. Uh, so you've got that infinite possibilities, and then that is reacting against the fact that, well, there, there are rules that you generally want to obey, and there are dice. I really enjoy the fact that you got to roll a die if you want to make a hit, and it's all in that second of like watching the die spin on the ground, and you're like, oh god, what's it going to land on? Like You can see what's happening. I, I really enjoy that it, it made it physical. I, I feel like I connected to it more than I did to video games just because of that. And the idea that you can literally do anything, yeah. anything <laughs> needs like a casual suggestion, like, yes. oh, can I do this? And it's like, roll for it. And it's like, okay, can I seduce the monster? <laughs> they spend the, the day with these guys, with this group, during which David spent most of the time having sex with the rich woman who, her name is Clarice Buffon. My character's second conquest of the campaign. Yeah, the first one was a ghost. <laughs> I mean, what's your charisma? <laughs> I mean, sometimes you get it right on the money, get that D20 in. D20, what's the DM gonna do? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta give it to him. Yeah. 
fates have determined that the story is going to go totally off the rails in this direction, and now I have to react to that. Um, and that, I think, is a lot of the magic of it. Spike is frozen. <laughs> this is a serious matter, Sam. I am Farkas Ficus Frost. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have no to offense, like. No offense, but I thought your name I was have... funny too when I first met you. Why do I keep you around? I am Farkas Ficus Frost Iron the Fourth. My friends call me F Quad. <laughs> My name is Zlingwin. My name's Kosif. I play Orson Fellowhammer. He's a consistently drunk dwarf. Well, uh, they actually don't know this, but I used to be part of a band of thieves until one of them decided they wanted me dead, so they told the leader I did something. I don't know what it was. All I know is they want my head on a stick, so I'm out of that town. Anyways. My greatest motivation is uh, power to reclaim my land. I don't like bullies. She literally exists just to antagonize whatever group she's in, and she's a bard. So she not only antagonizes them, but she antagonizes them in song. What is your favorite thing to have happened during Hammy? Hey Vinny, do you remember that time? Yeah. Remember that time? I, you got I do. Just say it. The time we got turned into a sheep? Yes. I don't remember why it happened, I just remember suddenly I was wooly. Well, I liked when Vinny got turned into a sheep. There was a monkey. There was a monkey. Krampus was pretty cool too, fighting Krampus, even though I wasn't there. But um, I heard that Krampus was, was pretty cool. in general? Yeah, like what does the game kind of mean to you? Um, hmm. That's a big question. <laughs> yeah, it is. I just really like being able to um, create characters that are not at all like myself. Um, it's a nice form of escapism and it's also, I'm just really big on stories and storytelling. I definitely like like interacting with different people. Like, like, the idea of role-playing as different characters is a great way to, like, meeting people, I guess, and, like, not being uncomfortable around people. I didn't really like pretending in front of people or acting in front of people. So, playing Kosa probably helped me to, like, not be so self-conscious and also, like, to enjoy that kind of stuff. I... I think everyone needs to know that it's more about like creativity and that literally anybody can play it. You don't have to be a writer, you don't have to be a creative person, you can just like walk into it and it's fun mainly because you only get to see the best of the people who you're working with. So you could become friends through this game with anybody you normally wouldn't be friends with. It's not, it's not, you don't have to go full out, <laughs> you don't have to come dressed as your character. And, talk in an accent, like you can just chill out and like do it how you want to do it and uh, it's a fun game, it's just a fun game. I don't know if I could really explain it, like they just need to try it and like give it a shot and, like be open-minded to it. You're supposed to have creative ideas and do crazy shit, have fun. <laughs>